These 10 background ideas are for your index cards. If you're like me, you're conscious about all the stuff that you've got in your stash and these ideas will get you using them. Hi, I'm Donna and today I'm going to show you 10 different ways to jazz up an index card. I got these from Officeworks in Australia. Pretty much everyone's got these in their stash. And if you don't, no worries, I've got you covered. I found two styles in Officeworks. This one here, I really like this one because it's got the spiral on it. And when you tear it off, you get this really cool pattern on the top. But what it also does, is it's got a perforated line there and just tear that off. So then that becomes your card exactly the same as this one. This pack have nothing printed on the back, so they've only got the lines on the front, blank on the back. This spiral index card, they've got the print on both sides. Now, if you're stuck at home, you can't get out, don't panic. I've got a printable for you. There are three cards on this sheet so you just need to go to my website to download these and I've got this in A4 and letter size and the link to my website is in the description below. We're going to do the easiest one first. If you've got a die cut machine so you've just got your card. I like the spiral one for this one because it gives that extra interest on the top. It's a clean card, nothing happening here, but a blue die cut heart. You can just put a few dots all the way around on the back of the little skinny bits. And I'm just going to put that there. The reason I'm using this is because red, white and blue always look good together. We've got blue lines on the card, the red and the blue here. I'm putting no distress ink on this one. I'm just going to leave it nice and plain. I'm going to leave this one up to your imagination to how you distress ink the edges, whether you bring in a blue ink or whether or not you do it with a vintage or however you want to do it. But you might have a different color heart or a different die. But that would be nice with a sentiment stamped on here or your own handwriting, put a message on and just pop that in a pocket. So this is a very plain and simple idea and this is idea number one. Idea number two is using a very wide washi. It looks really cool. A lot of you have the wide washi. You might have bought a set of washi and you get the wide washi in that set and you think, well, what do I do with it? So just get your wide washi and we're going to cover the whole back of the card. So I'm going to pull off enough paper to cover the whole lot and then I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to tell it to behave by just holding that down there with a little clip. I'm not clipping it, I'm just sitting it on top. And then I'm just going to get my craft knife and I'm going to cut that off as close as I can to the roll. So you just work out where it's going to go. I'm doing it upside down. I find for this wide one on the index card, I find this is easier. I'm just going to lay it there and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to sort of roll it on. Now you see there that when I come over this side, everything's nice and flat. You can cut it off right at the edge of your index card or you can cut the smallest, tiniest bit of your index card off as well. Now straight up, I've got this lovely lined background. In this set here, I've got matching washi. So you could pull off a piece of washi from another part of the roll if you wanted to make it look a bit torn you could 
tear it just to give it some interest have it come off the side a little bit and I've got all that excess hanging over I'm going to do the same again I'm going to trim it off it's much easier if you do it from the opposite side and it looks really good together by the way I've got a, a link underneath this video in the description box you can get 10% off if you want to pop over to the washi tape shop use my discount code underneath the video to get 10% off the washi tape is such beautiful quality and look at this it's not even lifting off the paper it will just stay there I done this one yesterday and it has not even lifted off the corners so that's optional to add a stamp and it's optional to distressing the edge and they are ready to go in my journal the idea for index card number three is another really quick easy one we're just going to score the side of it and we're going to use this like a flip in the journal I'll pick the blank back because we're going to cover it. I found a really old address book in my mum's stash and I just went through and picked out a blank page that she hasn't used yet. And I'm just going to glue that to the left hand side, same as this one, and then make the hinge there. I use the Distress Collage Medium. The color of this one is the vintage. You can get it in the clear. It's a glue. It's, all, it's a glue with a color and it also can be used as, as a sealer. So I'm just going to put just back inside that line there, a marker as to how much glue I need. And I'm gonna put enough glue all over that and I'm just going to glue that down. Clean off the edge of the overhang paper. And now I'm going to bring over my scoreboard. Now I'm going to score right beside the edge of this here. So I'm going to go here because I can just see the back side of that. And then I'm going to fold it there so there now is my hinge so how easy is that one and this one here all i done was go to a facebook group and printed out a freebie off one of the shares and i just made sure it was the right size for my index card and i glued that down and it, it's the same so these old vintage ads are beautiful to put on the back as well that's number three done now we're ready to do number four and number four is using a glassine envelope the glassine envelope is made to fit the index card and it fits the card with the tear holes left intact on the top of the card you just cut it to fit this one's pretty easy as well so let's get one of these made so we'll just use this one what I used for this one was just a dried flower and some labels. Start off by getting out the glassine envelope and opening up the flap. Put your card in, tucked right up into the corner. So tuck it up into, if you're right handed and you want to enter your envelope from the right hand side, tuck it up into the left hand corner and just lay it down on the table. So we'll just cut straight down the edge of the card. So I'm using the card as my guide and I'm gonna use the top of my card as my second line guide. So I've just cut away the top and the side of that envelope. You can find another use for the scraps, not a problem. So now we're just left with a corner feed blank envelope. Same front and back. That's it. That's finished. You can then 
put whatever you want in it. Once it's in a pocket, it's not going anywhere. These envelopes are six inches by three and a half inches. That's about 89 millimeters by 52 millimeters. I've got some of these in packs of 10 in my website shop for the Australian ladies. I know these size envelopes are not easy to come by in Australia. So if you want to grab yourself some of these envelopes, pop on over to my website shop. We'll do a specimen type card. All it is is just gluing down some dried flowers. If you haven't got any dried flowers, just use a sticker. It'll still work out. I'm just keeping it nice and simple because I've got so many cards to get through and I'm thinking that I can always go back later and add some more to that if I need to. Put a little clamp on it. You see, once you put the clamp on, it changes it as well. And that's ready to put in a journal too. And the glassine, it just gives that index card a different look and, you know, like it's just a, a different way to make yourself a specimen card. So that's idea number four done. Idea number five coming up. And this idea is to simply get a book page. I'm using a dictionary page. It's a vintage dictionary and I'm just pulling out the word bonnet and I'm going to use the graphics of the bonnet and I'm going to stamp the word bonnet on top of the paper page and then I'm going to cut that out and glue it onto my card and I'm going to glue it on the blank side so I can still use the front of the index card for journaling. I'm just going to fussy cut out the ladies. Perfect. I'm going to glue the ladies down as well. I'm just going to let that sit and dry for a little while before I handle it anymore. I'm just going to trim this back now it's dry. Just use the edge of the cardboard as your guide. Just trim off that excess book page. I'm going to just do a little bit of color around the edge. So that's a dictionary paper with a, a little bit of fussy cutting and the the ink stamp, just single lettering on top, matching the same word as the dictionary meaning. That one is going to look pretty cool in the in the journal as well. Index card number six. We're doing a collage of some no longer usable calendar tabs. 2017, I'm thinking, hmm, how can I use these? If you've got old calendars, you can use them. The only part of the calendar that showed up on here was here. But if I moved that over a little bit, you wouldn't have seen that. But it doesn't really matter. This looks pretty good. On the other side, it's an index card. Perfect. Pop it in a pocket and it's a journal card. We're ready to go. So let's make this one up. One, two, three, four, five we need. So I've got five of them. I don't even trim them up. I use them in their full state to start with. For this one, I use the Distress Collage Medium in the Vintage to glue down the calendar sheets. Plus, I went over the top with the collage as a sealer, but not a full sealer, just a hit and a miss to give it that vintage look. So they don't look as, well, they're not white, they're cream. But anyway, I'll show you that. If you haven't got this, just use your belly art glue and then go over the top with your Distress Ink. I'm going to cover my card with the, the collage medium. So I'm going to put that one in, up in the corner. So I will end up cutting off some of that, that blank area. Then I'm going to get my next month 
and I'm going to put it off to the side. Doesn't matter that there's no glue under there just yet. And I'm just going to put some glue under there. And put that down there. It doesn't matter if any of the glue squashes out because I'm going to use some of the glue as a feature. Come back under here again. See how it's squashing out? I'm wiping it off because I don't want it to go everywhere. I just want it to put a little line there on the join. Come in with the next month. And you can put some on the back of the corner. All right, so I'm coming on an angle like that. I'll just put it over here so that I, I can um, get it right up on that corner. So I'm going to come here and I'm just going to make sure that I've got enough of the calendar to cover over the whole card. So if I was to put that card there like that, you can see that I've got every bit of the calendar covering up this card. Keep on going there like that. Now that there has got to come here and I've got to make sure that I'm over every bit of the card. So I am going to get some of the date in there again. The only way I could avoid that is to use another piece of card. Use what glue is on my brush without putting on any new glue or of the medium and I'm just going to dry brush it and just put a little bit of colour on there like to help age it. Like I said, the paper's already cream. And then I'm going to hurry up and get off my index card off here before it sticks. Now it's quite wet. I'm going to get a clean piece of paper. So that's pretty good. So I'll let it dry for a little bit before I start pushing around on it and cutting the edges off. So while that's drying, I'm just going to clean my brush. This product cleans up in water. Now I'm going to trim up the edges of this and I have just noticed that I put the calendar on the wrong side. I was meant to put it on the other side so I had a journaling side here. So take notice of which side you put your work on. So just come back and trim the excess calendar overhang off all the way around. You can use your scissors. Uh, I always prefer to use my craft knife. If you do get a little bit of curl, you know, like a, it's, it is a water-based product, but you do get a lot less curl than you would if you use Mod Podge. If you use Mod Podge to do this, you get a real lot of curl. The other thing is you can put this under a weight overnight. This is a great base. You can do so much more. You can build it up, use it on tags, distressing the edge. That's number six, all done. Use up your old calendar tabs. Number seven, we all love to put this tissue paper pattern in our journal. So if you're making a sewing journal or not, it doesn't have to be, is if you've used tissue paper pattern, you could make an index card just to sit somewhere near or by or with this piece of tissue pattern that you've used somewhere else. So we just need to select a piece of the tissue that you want to put on. I've just put this piece over the top of the lined paper and what I've done for the back is I've used the collage medium in the vintage to just color up the back so it's no longer white and I've also cut down another card smaller and I'm going to glue it over the back. So I put the collage medium on 
the lined side of the card because we want the line showing through the tissue paper. So you pick a piece of tissue, just tear this piece off and we'll lay that on there. Just get it the best you can. If you get wrinkles, you get wrinkles. Just got to know that we're handmade. Any, anything like this is handmade. You get it wrinkles and all. And then I'm going to cut off the paper, the tissue to the bottom part of the card evenly. And just go nice and slow because it's tissue paper. If you go too fast, you could rip your tissue paper. Just put a little bit of glue on the edge there and fold that over. It's just going to give us a little bit of decoration on the back side when we add the other piece of card. That's looking pretty snazzy. Now what we've got to do is get a second card and we're going to trim it down to fit on the back. Now the way I trim down, instead of cutting four sides off so that it's smaller like that, I'm just going to cut off two sides about a quarter of an inch on one end which will give me an eighth on on each end so there's that much cut off there and then I do the same on the bottom I cut off about a quarter of an inch that'll give me an eighth on the top and the bottom so when I put that card back on there it's now smaller all the way around this is too wet for me to put any color on the back so I need to wait for that to dry in the meantime I'll just glue down the one I covered yesterday. Like I said, you can use your barely art glue. You don't have to use the medium that I use. It's, it's just something that I've been wanting to use for a while and I, I've finally took the plunge and got some. It's the right way up. Place it smack bang in the middle. I like the idea of the index mat on the back of that. That's idea number seven done. I'll just get number eight ready for you. And number eight is going to be the paint swipe card. It's paint. Simply no water added, just paint. You need a little gift card or an old credit card that you've got and your index card, one color, two colors, or three colors of paint. You can use your single-sided or your double-sided card. You can do it on the blank side, or you can do it on the lined side. Quite like the lined side. So let's do the demo on the lined side. I'm using Joe Sonia paint because I have got another acrylic paint that I got from Bunnings, but it was too runny. It was too thin. It's got to be a little thicker. So we don't want anything too thin. So we'll start off by putting three daubs of color onto your, your card. Now you might need to sacrifice your first card. So if you haven't got a lot of cards, just beware. So I'm going to go black right here. This is rich gold and it's a, a velvet matte finish. And this is brown earth and it's also a matte finish. Like I said, my first card is a sacrifice. I probably won't get to use my first card. So what we're doing is sort of like a screen print. So if, we, if you look at your card, there it is upright. We're going to hold it on about a 45 degree angle and we're going to scrape the paint like that. Alrighty, so here. So so I can show you properly, I'm going to hold it on a 45 degree angle and I'm just going to grab that paint and I'm going to drag it down the page. See what I mean by that's not nothing special. That's my first pass and it doesn't look very stunning. 
All right, so what we want to achieve is something a little more rustic, a little more, you know, not so, not so lovely. All right, so now I can control it. I've got it on my, my what I call a squeegee, but it's my plastic card. Now I can put it in, I can start it wherever I want on here. I'm going to hold it there and I'm just going to go like that until I get it to where I want it. Now I've, I've done that quite sharp so I can actually go like that now. So you just keep on going until you figure out how you want to start and finish. So you're just doing a little bit of a swipe. You can go back over your work if you need to and you just do a few of them until you get it to how you want it. And the more you do, the better you get at it and it just sort of seems to work itself out. See what I mean? They, it just gets better as it goes along. So you do use up a few cards doing this. So if you're not happy, you know, wasting your cards, this method might not be for you. You know, even looking back, I know I can use that. It's got a lovely square base there. I can come back in and I can put a die cut on it and I can really work with these pieces. But you know what? I could dry that and I could tear this up and use this in snippets and, you know, little bits and pieces. So this is definitely not wasted. I can use this in matching areas around my journal. So that's method number eight, the paint swipe. This is a base for you to do whatever you like. Once this dries, I'll decorate the top and show you a few ideas. Let's do number nine. If we're going to have some sewing tissue paper in our journal, we've got to have something to go with. So this one is we're going to lay down some color on the background of the index and then we're going to stamp over the top. So we're going to use the double sided index card and we're going to use the makeup brushes. You can use your blender no problem at all and I've got here a pack of sewing themed cling stamps. I'm just doing a tattered rose and an antique linen because I just want a softer look for this one. I'm not going for the bright colors here. Mind you, you can. So I'm just going to lay down two colors for this little one. A very light color on the base first. And I'm concentrating more just in the middle. Then I'm going to get my pad. This is nearly dry as well. There's hardly any ink left on this pad. You will get a whole new look if you've got a brand new Distress Ink. So again, this is Tattered Rose. I'm going to get it on its side and I'm just going to drag it across the paper like that. Now I've got my bottom bit done. So it's given me more of a paint effect. Right, so that's that color done. Then I'm going to change brush so I don't mess up my colors and I'm going to put the antique linen on the bottom. I'm going to use some tea dye on this card as well. Just laying down a little bit of color there and I'm going to do the same. This one's nearly dry as well and I'm going to drag it across just to give me that some streaky lines. You don't have to be good at this. This is that's pretty rough. Okay. Now the tea dye, we can do this now before we add any stamps because that way you don't ink over the top of your stamp. Your stamp is coming to the forefront. And I'll go around the edge with tea dye. Now what I'm thinking is to put a ruler across the bottom. All right, so we'll put it down first. 
So far, so good. I think the lady might be too big. I'm thinking it needs the lady on it. I think she'd look pretty cool on there, but I'm just not going to I'm not going to put the whole lot of her on there. So a piece of washi over there and that now won't print at all. I really do want this lady to transfer nicely. So by using this this system here, I can have two goes at it if I need to. But I don't need to. That looks fabulous. Now, all that's left to do here is take the washi tape back off so that I know that that stamp didn't go over the top of the rule. I think that looks heaps better. It doesn't give me that double print. Looks like I'm a professional. You just buy using washi tape. Now you can leave that like that. If you're selling your journals, you can put that in the journal and let other people write their message on there. You don't have to fill it in. One thing I've noticed when I see journals online is sometimes the maker puts too much on. And it's nice that if you're going to receive a journal, like I sell my journals. So when I sell a journal, I want you to be able to grab this card and fill it in for yourself. So these cards are perfect for that. They're a wonderful base. We're up to lucky last, number 10. We're doing the very easy Project Life cards. And I believe these have been discontinued. These were also in my mum's stash. I've got quite a few there. These are gonna last me a while. I use these from time to time in my projects. So I thought they'd be perfect to use today for one of the ideas for my index cards. Show you how easy this one is. Super duper easy. Get a corner punch. Punch four corners. You're nearly done. Pick out your favorite card. Doesn't matter which one it is. Just pick one out. You can journal on that side. I try and pick out something that's going to go in one of my journals and then it's ready to glue down. This one here, I didn't color up. This one here, I think I will. I think the color vintage photo will work pretty well with this one just to make it really stand out. You can really tell the difference how much darker that is. All right, I'm going to put some on here as well really darken that edge up and that'll help tie the two cards together. I'm going to use the Barely Art glue this time. You don't need much and stick it right down in the middle. So there's our Project Life card made up into an index card. Don't, if you don't have any Project Life cards, just get some scrapbook card stock, not paper, just a card stock because you need it to have a bit of firmness about it. Well, that was a lot of fun showing you these background ideas for your index cards. If you don't like them white, start off by changing the color first. Tea dye them, stencil them, spray them before you use any of these ideas. Let me know which one is your favorite in the comments below. I'm Donna, thanks for watching and bye for now.